Hi, I'm Nancy Lavigne, Director of the National Institute of Justice, and I'm delighted to be in conversation with Dr. Mark Green. He's a physical scientist at the National Institute of Justice, and he also heads up our Office of Technology and Standards. Welcome, Mark. Thanks, Nancy. It's great to be here with you today. Yeah, likewise. Look, we have a big new set of standards that we just released, and that's why we're talking today. We do. Um, can you share more, because I'm aware, mm -hmm. even though I'm not a physical scientist and I really don't know much about your business, um, but I'm aware that NIJ for years has been known for its body armor standards. And in fact, if I'm not mistaken, if you look at any vest that is procured by law enforcement in this country, it's gonna have an NIJ seal of approval on it, right? Uh, that is correct. Okay. Uh, any Why armor, is that? Yeah. Well, any armor that goes through our, our program called the NIJ Compliance Testing Program and passes all the requirements, which includes testing to our latest standards, mm -hmm. uh, will get that NIJ mark on the actual armor panel, on the label, so okay. that law enforcement officers can easily check to see that their armor is certified by NIJ. Okay, so I'm an officer and yeah. I get a vest, and if I don't see NIJ on it, what does that mean? Well, that means that it hasn't gone through our compliance testing program. Okay. So you're not sure exactly how well that armor is gonna perform. You're gonna be relying on uh, what the vendor tells you, okay. but armors that have gone through our NIJ compliance testing program, they've been rigorously tested at one of our NIJ approved laboratories that mm -hmm. are accredited to our standards, and they've been tested, uh, and all of the uh, information has been reviewed by mm -hmm. us, and we have certified that they meet our requirements. Okay, so that sounds important. What percentage of vests that are submitted for testing don't make the cut? Well, this is a great question that you ask because it talks to the real importance of quality assurance mm -hmm. that our program provides. Mm -hmm. About 37% of armor models that come through our program actually fail. What? 37%. So officers over a third of them could be wearing vests that don't meet standards and are not protecting them the way they think they are. Is that that, right? that is that is a possibility. Okay. And not for sure, but um, but that's that's a risk. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me more about a little bit about the history, which I know is yeah. goes. Does it even predate NIJ being called NIJ? It it does. Okay. It, it goes back to when NIJ was actually the National Institute of Law Enforcement and Corrections. Um, my Nilek J oh, is right. what we that were called. Oh, that was a great acronym. I yeah, it was, it was a little J. bit that of a just mouthful. just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> so the first standard that was published by Nilek J was in 1972. Uh, okay. And so and that was the very you first version. You were in version. diapers or oh, I don't gosh. even think you were around. I wasn't even around yeah. yet. Okay. Uh, so the standards themselves, this, this even predates me. Um, so I'm grateful to be sort of, you know, the next expert to be able to sort of maintain this program. Well, for you've law been shepherding this program for years. Oh, and, and I'm hoping to do it for a few more years. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the history was this was when body armor was just coming on the scene, right? Yeah. And that's there right. was really no knowledge about how effective it was. Um, you know, I mean, even there were no standards until NIJ came along, I'm guessing. Is that right? And that's, then how have they evolved over time? Yeah, that's actually actually right. In fact, there weren't even reliable ballistic resistant materials, meaning materials that could resist uh, gunshots mm -hmm. um, until at least the late 1960s, early 1970s. Mm -hmm. So NIJ or NILEC J was, was a real leader in introducing body armor uh, to the law enforcement community. In fact, uh, there was a program uh, that NILEC J funded uh, with some other federal agencies where uh, armor was manufactured, this early version of body armor mm -hmm. that met NIJ's early standards mm -hmm. uh, was uh, fielded in 15 cities uh, for a couple of years to demonstrate its effectiveness. Okay. Uh, and that's where it really started. And then since then, NIJ uh, introduced uh, new standards, continually revising them based okay. on the threats and the needs. Okay. Uh, the very first NIJ funded program actually was in 1977 the very first version of the compliance testing program. It wasn't called oh, okay. that back then. All right, uh, is that version 1.0 and we're now at like 7.0 or something like that? Yeah, like, the very first, ver yeah, we're on that. We're now, we just published our seventh revision of our body armor okay. standard. All right. Uh, so it's gone through several revisions over the decades. Okay. And I can say that, not over the years, over the decades. Yeah, that's it's quite a, a feather in NIJ's cap to have such a lead role in officer safety 
which of course is a huge priority for Absolutely. us. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so things evolve over time. Right. One thing that changes is technology itself, mm -hmm. right? New materials, stronger materials, um, but there's also changes in terms of firearm power, different right. kinds of threats. Right. And then there's also even changes in the population of people who wear body armor. So there's a lot more women officers now. And they, I understand there is different body armor that's been developed for the female form. Uh, so can we just talk, like unpack each of those changes and developments and yeah. how it relates to these new standards that we just released? Absolutely. So when in the early, early days of body armor in the 1970s and into the 1980s, you know, a lot of the officers complained at the time that it was heavy and bulky. Right. So over the years, the body armor manufacturers have really innovated and, and really uh, been able to design body armor uh, that's smaller and lighter, mm -hmm. but adds that, that same amount of protection. Uh, also, new materials, new advanced woven materials have been developed over the years, uh, new ways to construct the body armor so that you can get that same level of performance with a little bit less material through sort of creative design okay. uh, and engineering of new materials. Um, like you mentioned, uh, law enforcement has changed. There are many more uh, women officers out there today, mm -hmm. and we hope there's going to be a lot more into the future. Yeah. Uh, but they also need that same level of protection. There's been body armor that has been designed for women for many, many years. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, there are dozens of models on our compliant products list that meet our requirements that will protect women officers. But they are constructed differently. Uh, the body armor that a lot of officers wear, most officers wear, uh, that soft armor, that armor vest, I mm -hmm. sort of do this because it's like, you know, you kind of wear yeah. this vest, right, you know? <laughs> uh, and you see officers wearing that vest either over their uniform or under their uniform mm -hmm. uh, is typically flat. It's a flat panel that kind of fits mm -hmm. around them. Mm -hmm. um, but women officers, have, there's construction elements right. uh, to make it non-planar, right? Right. And when you add those construction elements, um, you add potential points of vulnerability, so you need okay. to test it a little bit differently. What mm -hmm. we've done in our new standard is really tightened up how the female armor is tested, uh, which is so important. Okay, I have a question yeah. because um, I'm aware that there are different sizes for women. That's right. And so are there a wide array of different female body armor? And then do you have to test each one of them for, say, cup size? Well, that's a great, that's a great question. So we test two different sizes when we, for, of armor in our compliance testing program. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the construction elements in one particular model. So a model is what materials go in it, how many layers there are, how it's stitched, mm -hmm. any construction elements. Uh, those, those elements of the design kind of carry through that model of armor. So okay. either so it's, so it's really, there's small, some basic um, design characteristics and then right. it's a little less important, the That's right. proportions, is That's that right? right? And, and what I would say too, is that when armor first comes through our program and it's tested uh, for women, um, you know, it'll be, you know, the, the shots will challenge the armor in different places, mm -hmm. but a great feature of our program is we have something called the follow-up inspection test, okay. uh, follow-up inspection testing or FIT. And every year or two, every armor that's on our list that NIJ certifies gets periodically retested. Okay, so can you talk us through, I've seen some visuals of this. Like yeah. you've got, is it clay? What's the body? It's yeah. not like a crash test dummy. What do you use? Well, to it's, test? A great, it's a great question. So the testing that, that we do in our, in our, through our standard is done in what's called a ballistics laboratory. Mm -hmm. And so this is a, is a range that's typically indoors made of concrete and it's a very, very long kind of long room. Mm -hmm. And in that room, you've got, you've got a, a test firearm. It's not like a, an actual gun that we would use, we would hold and, and shoot. It's a, it's a test firearm that's very carefully calibrated. Why, why is that? Well, we really okay. want to be able to measure, uh, measure the velocities very accurately. Okay. This is a very controlled environment. Yeah. So we want to be very specific, very accurate, very precise about what we're doing. Okay. okay. In the middle of that range, if you could imagine, is a giant rectangle. Um, and in that rectangle is clay, like gray clay. It's actually modeling clay. It's the same like oh. clay you would use like modeling in an art class. Okay. It was adopted back in the 1970s for testing. And it provides a good, um, it provides a good support for the armor to test on. Okay. And, it, and it responds. And it doesn't really matter if it's replicating 
the structure of the human body or anything necessarily. Or? You're, you're, you're right. It's, it's, a, it's, a background, it's, a, it's, a, it's a background used for testing. Right. Trying to understand sort of injury mechanics is a really complicated problem. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of really intelligent people working on that, but that's tough. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not trying to necessarily replicate sort of human injury. Okay. It's really a testing background okay. um, that was developed uh, decades ago. And so that's what you put the armor on. So you imagine these panels of armor strapped onto the clay with mm -hmm. essentially seat belts. Uh, and then okay. you have a, a laser, like a laser pointer that sort of aims right at the spot you want to, want to shoot. Okay. And then that's where you fire the shots. And right. then you can move the clay block around or the armor around to, to change where you shoot. And how many different spots do you test? Oh, uh, we test several spots per so we call each armor a test item when mm -hmm. we are in the laboratory. So we shoot it several times, uh, each armor several times. In different in, locations. In different locations, okay. in different orders. Mm -hmm. uh, we can also change the angle of the shots. So you shoot them at different angles. Okay. Um, and you shoot, you know, you shoot several uh, dozen of these test items mm -hmm. um, is what you do in the laboratory for the soft armor. And then um, um, tens of armors for the, for the hard plates as well. The hard plates are ones that resist are designed to resist rifle rounds. And the soft armor is the more commonplace armor that's okay, used for that's, pistol rounds. So if I'm, a, yeah. I'm an officer, yeah, what vest do I wear and when? Always wear your soft armor. Okay. Always wear your soft armor. If you're in a tactical situation, perhaps an active shooter, mm -hmm. uh, or perhaps you're on a SWAT team, okay. then you would need to have the hard armor because you may expect so the, to encounter somebody the right with a rifle. Or whatever, that kind of... Yeah, more more enhanced armor, okay. right. All right, interesting. Yeah. Sometimes you don't know what you need. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Moment, but, That's right. A um, lot of officers will keep a hard plate maybe in their patrol car. Oh, okay. And if they have to get a call, they have to respond, and they can, they can don that. But you'd always mm -hmm. have the soft armor because you never know. Right. Um, you know, FBI statistics show that uh, handguns are still the biggest threat to law enforcement officers in this country. Right. Um, so always. But there have has a, been an increase in the firepower. So how has that related to? Oh, it's a great question. Developments. And and so it's a great question. Standards. So our 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 old standard, the outgoing one, only had a couple of different types of rifle rounds that we mm -hmm. tested it to. Uh, the manufacturers over the past couple of de decades have been testing the NIJ certified hard plates. Uh, to additional threats, mm -hmm. we've called them special threats, mm -hmm. uh, but they're becoming more and more common. Mm -hmm. So we've incorporated more uh, rifle threats uh, to our to our okay. standards. So now, instead of having um, you know two two threats, we've got we've got five rifle threats that we test our armor to, which is a great improvement in terms of uh, okay. performance. There's also the threat of sharp weapons. That's like right. Knives. Do these same vests repel? Um, knife attacks? Or? Well, that's a great question. Uh, maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, typically, uh, armor that's designed for firearm resistance may not protect you from stab. That's why we have a whole separate stab armor, uh, a st stab armor standard. Okay. So the testing is different, and actually the way that the materials are constructed, the soft materials, mm -hmm. um, are different. And it has to do with how they're woven. You know, right. the bullet striking a soft uh, armor panel is different than the way a knife or a spike might mm -hmm. engage with that that armor. Uh, so we do have two different testing standards. Um, but wait, so I'm an officer. I yeah. want to protect myself against both bullets and knives. Do I wear two vests? No, but okay. you could. Ha the manufacturers could de could uh, design their armor to resist both. Okay. But they'd have to be tested separately. Oh, okay. I see what right, you're right, getting. Right. So we have different standards and different testing, but we can do it on the same vest. Yeah, that's okay. right. Now, it's Got really it. interesting because over in Europe, the knife threat is actually much greater yes. than it is here. Yes. But, for, but in, in, in the U.S., uh, the knife threat is a big threat for the correctional officers. So our Good stab point. standards are often uh, the stab-resistant stab vests are used by our correctional officers primarily. Okay. Okay. Uh, but you could, you could have one, we call it a multi-threat, but you'd have to be tested separately. Okay, I know this is just, we're doing the tip of the iceberg, that this is, yeah, yeah. there's a lot behind here, but I wanted to know what's on the horizon? Yeah, so we're gonna be implementing our standard, um, the, the new ballistic resistance standard mm -hmm. um, in, in the spring. So we're gonna have a manufacturer workshop in February. The manufacturers okay. can come and learn more about the program and how we're gonna implement it. 
uh, armors uh, manufacturers will be able to test their armors next year. Mm -hmm. And hopefully by the end of next year or beginning of the following year, we'll have a compliant products list uh, with armors uh, that meet our new standard. Okay. We're going to have a new updated STAB standard next year, uh, and then we'll implement that. But we've also got an updated standard. Uh, NIJ also has a standard for uh, uh, law enforcement pistols. So we're oh, updating okay. that and we're going to oh, have fantastic. that. And then we have some other, other work that we're, we're doing with helmets and with shields and some other protective uh, equipment uh, that'll be sort of be a little further beyond that. But we're really excited about being able to kind of update all of these standards and modernize them for the law enforcement and corrections community. That's fantastic. Now, um, one more question, yep. I think, but don't hold me to that. Uh -huh. um, I'm a procurement officer yeah. for a law enforcement agency or public safety department. Do I, like, I'm thinking I need to update the vest that we buy. I, there's a, it's yeah. almost like a sell-by date on them. Is that right? Do they expire or? It's a great question. What the manufacturers do is they provide a warranty. Okay. And that warranty period is usually somewhere like five years, up to seven years for the soft armor, and sometimes up to 10 years for the hard plates. Mm -hmm. What we've done is we're going to do a slow transition from the old to the new. So we're going to maintain the armors that we have on the, on the current list, okay. and we're going to continue the fit testing of those. And as the new armors come online that meet the new standard, we'll slowly begin to pull uh, models away from, from uh, the old standard to the new. So it's okay. going to be a but, slow transition. And then for the procurement officer, you, you also might be looking at right. you know, when that warranty comes to an end in the context of these new standards. Correct. Okay. And that's the idea because we know these are durable goods. There could be armors that meet our outgoing 06 standard mm -hmm. today. Those may be in the, on the field for five years. Mm -hmm. So we need to really so have a, a transition. transition, a transition plan. Okay. And to make things easier, we've changed our nomenclature, uh, the way we describe the vest and how they protect used to be confusing. We'd have Roman numerals. We just made it very simple, HG1, HG2, and then for rifles, RF1, RF2, and RF3. Okay. Make it real easy. And our compliance product list lists all the armors that meet NIJ standards that are certified. It's the easy button. All they have okay. to do is consult the list, and if it's there, it's good to go. That's fantastic. Mark, I am so impressed with your work, your expertise, and that of your team. And this is a program that we should be really proud of about making officers safe. So thank you so much. Thanks, Nancy, for the conversation today. I, I agree. It's a great program and yeah. I look forward to more. Yes, okay. as do I. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.